It seems almost inevitable that we will suffer joint pain as we age. Not only that, some people develop osteoarthritis, the degenerative joint disease from an early age. And sometimes even more ominous than the thought of ongoing pain and stiffness is the thought of surgery or an existence on pain medication. Of course, there are various paths to dealing with osteoarthritis, but perhaps none offer quite so much promise as regenerative medicine, the realm of stem cells and exosome and related treatment. Exactly what can regenerative medicine do for osteoarthritis? And what exciting possibilities for treatment is it opening up for the future? Welcome to Vital Science, where we look at how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Today I speak to regenerative medicine specialist, Dr. Damon Noto. Dr. Noto is a physiatrist at the Spine and Joint Center, Hasbrook, New Jersey. He has twice received the America's Most Honored Doctors Award from the American Registry. Dr. Damon Noto, it's a pleasure to have you on Vital Signs. Pleasure to be here. Now, we're here, we're going to talk about regenerative medicine, which is your field today. And I'd like to start with putting an example to you. I have a, a family friend, and she's a lady in her 70s, and her knees are in a, a bad condition. She's had one knee reconstruction, and she didn't like the, the re rehabilitation period. It took a long time. She was out of action over that period. And now she's, the other knee is, is getting bad, and she doesn't want to do this again um, with the knee problem. If she is to consider regenerative medicine, what, um, I mean, what would you recommend in, in this situation? So it all depends on what level you are in the degenerative process. We always like to get it in the early phase as possible. Mm -hmm. So if it's just beginning and it's mild, um, there's a lot of things we can do, such as PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. It's basically taking the patient's blood, spinning it down, and getting the growth factors. Mm -hmm. Taking those growth factors and putting it where your body needs it, say it's your knee. And that can actually decelerate or stop the degenerative process. Um, and it's very helpful, decreases pain, inflammation. Um, the studies show it can work very well. Now, if you're talking about moderate to severe arthritis, we're getting closer and closer to bone on bone, mm. you might need something stronger, such as exosomes or a stem cell type of treatment, which is a more powerful type of treatment. Well, if we're, if we're talking about stem cells, um, where, what's the next step? I mean, what, what would be, what, what is the mechanism at work here if, if stem cells are, are used? So when we talk about stem cells, we're usually about talking about taking it from the person's body, uh, taking it out and actually giving it back to them where, where they need it, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody has stem cells in their body. Uh, when you're younger, you have a lot. And then as you get older, it decreases with age, also decreases with health. So if your health is poor, you're going to have less stem cells. If your health is really good, you're going to have more stem cells. So basically, stem cells are the cells in your body that control repair and regeneration. So every day you're breaking down, your cells are dying, and they're being replaced. Hmm. And what's replacing them and causing your body to stay healthy and regrow are these stem cells, which circulate in your blood. And when you have trauma, those stem cells go to that area, and they're like the foreman telling people what to do. Hey, lay down fibrin here, lay down cartilage here. We need to grow blood vessels. So they're the ones in charge of repairing the body. Mm. Sometimes the body breaks down and there's not enough stem cells or there's not enough stem cells that can get into that area. So places that are what we call avascular or areas that don't have a lot of good blood supply uh, tend to not do well with trauma because it takes a long time to heal because stem cells can't get there, right? So a joint has a capsule and the blood vessels don't go always so deep into the joint. So we can take the stem cells from the bone marrow, per se, and then we bring it and we put it directly into the knee. Very powerful, because now those cells are in there saying, hey, cartilage, there's a problem. Let's repair it and regrow it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the more stem cells you can put in there, the more powerful the treatment. So there's been studies which show if you take out stem cells and you grow them, so you go from a million to 10 million, 20, 30, 40 million, the more powerful the treatment. So in some clinical trials, they have it where they're growing it in a lab and then putting it back, which is amazing and can have amazing effects. It's like the, the uh, Stone Age compared to the Space Age. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we say in the next 10 to 20 years, we'll probably have more advances than we did in the past 100 years. Uh, with the 
speed at the research is going, it's just accelerating ex astronomically. So we're going to see some major breakthroughs and you'll you're here in the news now things about people losing vision, using stem cells, regaining vision, right? People losing hearing using stem cell technology to regrow the nerves in the ear to get your hearing back. Things that where you had a spinal cord injury, abilities to take stem cells, put it into the area where you had a spinal cord trauma and regrow some of the spinal cord so people are, could be able to walk again. On that, I mean, um, I, I can't help but think of Christopher Reeve, the one and only Superman. I was, I was a huge fan as a child. I mean, it was terrible what happened. I mean, he was having had a, a, a riding accident and that was I mean, he, he handled the situation admirably, but um, ultimately died much earlier than he should have. In, in that kind of situation, I mean, could someone like, like Christopher Reeve, would he, would he potentially be able to, to walk future? again? sure. Yes. Wow. And the earlier we can get to someone with the type of trauma with stem, stem cell technology, the better the result is going to be. So if he had a trauma within 48 hours, we had the ability to put stem cells into that area of trauma. Uh, he may, might not have been paralyzed, uh, you know. 20 years into the future, those things might not be happening uh, with a level of uh, advancements that we're seeing. You see, is the main thing that needs to happen to, uh, for this, this kind of possibility to, to become reality? Uh, we need to be supportive of the research. Um, it's, it's growing fast. Um, there's some pushback to try to accelerate it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, obviously there's people who would like to see um, surgeries go on forever and people putting in implants and hardware in people forever because it's a big industry and there is money to be made. But if we can put and invest in the technology and research into regenerative medicine, stem cells and things like exosomes, it's gonna happen a lot faster. Hmm. So you know, we need to support it and we need uh, more grants and uh, obviously more money in, in the field of research to get it to be where it needs to go. At the moment, I understand that with, with exosomes, and you can invite you to give you a little explanation about what, what these are exactly, but um, there's less restriction on exosomes than there is presently on, on the use of stem cells. Correct. So uh, what, what kind of possibilities are there with, with someone, if someone is having like knee pain or any kind of joint pain, osteoarthritis related, what, what are the possibilities? So exosomes is one of the new advancements that we've seen. Not that exosomes are new, but we really didn't know much about them before, but with the research it's advancing fast. So stem cells, the way they work is they release all these growth factors and signal molecules that tell your body, hey, we need more of this, we need to repair that. Well, exosomes is one of those signaling molecules. They're tiny little molecules that tell your body you need to regenerate and repair tissue and they're very powerful. And we're using them a lot right now in the United States on different conditions to try to get people to repair faster. So we're using everything from osteoarthritis to lung issues, so people have chronic lung damage, to things such with the brain, uh, chronic fatigue, uh, cognition problems. Uh, exosomes can go anywhere in the body and cause regeneration and healing, very powerful. And there's a lot less restrictions in the U.S. with exosomes than there are for stem cells. So right now, there's a lot of advances with exosomes because uh, a lot of doctors are experimenting it with their patients and offering it uh, to more people. Things go fast when we allow our clinicians to get out there, use it in the clinics, and, in, and use it on patients. So we start to learn a lot about how things work and how we can get it to work better. With very heavy restrictions, it slows the rate down because we're learning less and we're restricted to just trials. And what's involved in, in you mentioned also for, for treating brain-related conditions, what's involved in, in getting exosomes to the brain? So the exosomes are so tiny that they actually travel in the, in the blood right into the brain. So there's something called the blood-brain barrier. That stops larger molecules from entering the brain. It's a basically a protective cover, right? Exosomes are so tiny, it flows right through it. So when you put it into someone's blood with an IV, you can get a lot of the exosomes to go up into the brain, and they travel into areas of the brain that have trauma and damage. Um, so it's a really nice method or way to treat people because it is very easy to get those molecules into the brain. Stem cells are so large, they have a hard time getting stem cells through the blood-brain barrier. So exosomes offer us an option to treat people uh, that's not a difficult way because you can actually get it right through the bloodstream. 
So a simple IV could do a very good treatment. Uh, if, if one of our viewers is watching there and they're having problems with arthritis, how would they go about pursuing this as a, as a treatment? So if you go online and you type in regenerative medicine, PRP, and then you put your condition, you're going to see a lot of clinics in different states all over the country are offering these type of treatments. Uh, they want to look someone obviously is board certified, very well trained, and comes from a good clinic. But um, you can actually find a lot of people right now doing things with regenerative medicine. And every year it's growing. More and more doctors are getting into it because they see the potential. They basically see the writing on the wall that this is the direction that we're going to go. Regenerative medicine is, is the future uh, for repairing the body, also repairing uh, the joints and orthopedics. Yeah. One question I have, Dr. Noto. I, I think, I mean, this is, we were hearing about stem cells a decade ago or decades ago, and it, it seemed it was this very promising medical innovation. If we went back 20 years and we, we think about what we were being told in the media and everything and the, this huge sensation, we'd expect to be somewhere Much vastly better. different at, at this point in time. What, right. what... Uh, part of the problem was there's two types of stem cells. One is embryonic stem cells, one is adult stem cells. And when it first came out, everybody associated stem cells with embryonic stem cells, which is used, um, you get an embryo and you're actually taking the embryo and using the cells from that. Um, and there's obviously a lot of people who had some moral issues regarding using that. What they didn't realize is there's something called adult stem cells. So when a mom has a baby, there's the umbilical cord, right? In that amniotic fluid and around the placenta, there's tons of stem cells. So you don't need to kill anything. You can actually just harvest the, from the amniotic fluid or from around the placenta. And we could have been experimenting with those cells uh, years and years ago and learning at a much faster rate. What slowed it down was everybody thought, oh, if it's stem cells, it's talking about using embryonic stem cells. Um, and embryonic stem cells actually can hold a lot of potential to do a lot of amazing things. So everybody was looking for that magic bullet that would regrow an organ. Um, and pushed aside the adult stem cells, which have amazing potential, and we could have harnessed it a long time ago, uh, but it was really bogged down and slowed down by people's conception of all stem cells are possibly bad or have moral ethical issues behind it. So I think that slowed down the research uh, tremendously. One innovation I, I've heard about, just lastly, Dr. Noto, in terms of what, what could be ahead with this kind of technology, I heard this is very cutting edge. They can take a certain type of cell and then kind of reprogram it so that it, it thinks it's a stem cell. And well, the, the mind boggles at what, what this could open up. This is another exciting area. It's, it's basically taking a cell which started as a stem cell, but it went all the way to a certain type of tissue. But science has now figured out a way, how do we reverse it to go back to becoming a stem cell? And the technology is getting there where we could take a cell from cartilage normal healthy cell and make it go back in stage to become a stem cell which would mean it's very easy to create stem cells in the lab especially that are perfect for you because it came from you right so you get it you regenerate it or bring it back to becoming a stem cell and you grow it in the lab and now you're putting that back in a person and it's very powerful the other thing is using genetic modification to stem cells themselves. So for instance, spinal cord injury. Uh, we could put stem cells in someone who had a spinal cord injury and not get great results and wonder why we didn't get great results. Well, some of the genetic programming of that cell, when you put it into the trauma, inhibits it from actually doing a lot of its work because that injury is releasing a lot of these factors which won't allow it to actually do its job. While you could genetically modify that stem cell so that it's resistant to that environment and will still grow tissue. So we're seeing a lot of breakthroughs in areas where we thought we could just throw stem cells at the issue but it didn't work. So now if we modify that stem cell just a little bit so that it could work very well in that environment, it works amazing. So the future is, is very bright uh, with, with this technology. The possibilities sound endless. Pretty much endless, yeah. And talking about regenerating organs, uh, regenerating vision, hearing, um, you know, 20, 30 years from now, we might be living in a completely different time.
Watch this space. Dr. Noto, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much.